Good morning. The grace of God is with us all. And it will be here to preach the message as well, I trust. Thank you all for coming. Those of you that are listening in by radio or other means, may peace rule your heart as well. It's a good thing to come to church. And it's a good thing to be relaxed in church. So I wish that everyone would be, you know, just be yourself and don't worry about yourself as in whether you belong or whether you're in the right place. Let's just calmly sit down and enjoy what the Lord could teach us out of his word. Thanks for praying for me. My prayer has been that God would help us and uh, that I could step out of the way. Today's subject is a subject that we all in one or the other way can identify with and can or deal with and will deal with. Although the, uh, I'd like to say this, I would like to say to the parents, those of us that are raising a family, that I had a special, I had you in my mind in a special way as I, as I worked on this message. But like I said, it's not just entirely parenting or child training. It, is, it has to do with all of us. Uh, we never outgrow this. The, the topic today I call the blessing of a God-ordained authority. So if you want that topic simpler, we could just simply say we're going to talk about authority. Okay, so what is authority? Do we understand that? If I could ask you, I don't know if anybody is ready to say something, but what comes to your mind when you hear authority? Just like, would you be so free to say what comes to your mind? Government Government authority? Sure, thank you. Anybody else that would like to say that? I'm I'm sure you all know, I'm sure you all think about something, and I'm sure most of you don't want to say it, but what? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, yes, thank you. A humble person. Thank you. Power and protection. protection. Okay. You know, and the good chance is that many of us don't say anything because when we think of authority, right away we get a negative picture of our own experience of how authority was misused, um, abused, and... uh, We don't like to think about that. Maybe it was the way we were brought up or maybe it's the way I was treated at one or the other place where somebody had the authority over me. And so authority rings a negative mind, a a negative thought in many cases. And uh, that is why so many of us perhaps don't even like the subject. And so as I worked on the message, I realized I'm probably having a little bit of an unfamous topic but I think it's, a, it's of necessity. <clears throat> my, um, uh, in one of my visits, there was a young man. I think, yeah, he was an unmarried man at the time. He was a Sunday school teacher <clears throat> in a good church. And um, he shared with, with me or he shared in a circle. He says, I have a problem. I'm a Sunday school teacher. I think these were like eight, nine-year-old boys. So all boys. And he says, there is this one boy. He comes from probably what he thought was one of the best homes in their church. But when this boy comes into Sunday school, all peace is gone. He will rip the posters off the wall. He bumps against the, with his elbow against the wall and disturbs as much as possible. The Sunday school class is next to us. That is the best family's child. Then there's another young boy, same age. He comes, he's prim and proper. And whatever I say, he does. Like he is, he does, he, he is no problem at all. But he has a non-Christian father, very likely somewhat abusive, lives a lifestyle that we do not agree with. But he is a pleasure in Sunday school. This other boy is nothing but a problem. How do you deal with that? If somebody came to you and asked you and would ask you, why is it that way? We all want to have good homes. We would all like to be the good home in the church. There's a misunderstanding or there is a misapplication of the idea of authority. So 
we might have a very good home, but we do not know how to apply or misapply authority. <clears throat> and so it's an important subject. I love the subject. After working on it, I, I started to like it more. Years ago, <clears throat> I was traveling and uh, listening to a message and the uh, speaker brought something about that caught my attention. I've thought about that since. There is no authority except the one that God has given you. So people have not been able to come up with authority. Now we can misuse and abuse. That is wrongly applied. But authority is something that comes from God. So God is the one that gave authority. And he handed it out. If you uh, have a hard time with that, then turn to, uh, with me to Romans chapter 13. That's the tax verse. Romans 13, you are already thinking that's speaking about the government. And yes, it does. But in verse 1, it does not apply it necessarily to any kind of special powers. If you have the King James Version, you will find the word power. If you have New King James Version, you will find the word authority. And if you have other versions, then I don't know because I'm not familiar with the others. But in, in Romans 13 verse 1, you read this way. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Or like I said, in some of your Bibles, you will read authority. For there is no power or authority but of God. So God is the one that put power in place. The powers or authorities that be are ordained of God, that's a verse that can stand by itself. We can apply that to a, whether you're a parent, whether you're a school teacher, whether you are whatever you are, that is where it is. Authority is created by God as much as the, the flowers and the trees and the sun and the moon is, is created by God. <clears throat> The very sad part of that is, like I already said, that many of us, when we think of authority, we think more of abuse, of criticism, anger, pushing, fighting, struggling, and the likes. Well, that is not what we have in mind here when we, uh, when we look at the, t the subject today. We will come to a little bit of that physical thing uh, just in a little bit later. <clears throat> But the meaning or the, uh, the uh, goal or the uh, reason of authority, <clears throat> that is to give confidence. You know what? That works that way in your family. It works that way when you deal with government authorities or if at work or whatever, wherever under whichever authority you put yourself. If authority works the right way, it puts confidence in the in the circle. It's a very, you go into a classroom and the teacher has the authority. It's a confident class. Everybody is relaxed. Everybody can enjoy the air that is in there because authority is in control. Uh, same thing works in the family and that is where the, the main heart of the message is. This is why it's so important. Authority, though, and here's a few things that I wanted to say, and I was praying and hoping that I would not, with this, implement fear or discouragement. Now, if we would pull authority out of a home where mom and dad say, okay, we have nothing to say anymore. You know what? The children will just start to make their own choices. Take any of your homes. That's how we are going to do that. You know what? The children are small. They're going to make their own choices, and we will just watch it. We, we will take no authority if you would go to a counselor as a, as a couple and say, this is the decision that we have made. The counselor, if he has a little bit of wisdom, he's going to tell you something like, you will end up in disaster somewhere, sometime in the future. Not necessarily sure why, but you will end up in, the, in, in disaster. Now, when we look at our country, we live in a country that is implementing that same idea. Give us the authority. We, your children need to make their own choices. Sorry, not us. Like... They want to take that out of our homes. They want to take that out of parenting. It is, we, we live in a time like that. In our Sunday school class, we're studying about the end time and how the wrath of God could come and, and how things can lead up to that. I want to be careful that I don't add too many ingredients to this. But I believe that this could all work together. You know what? You don't need to go along and you will see lack of authority. Legalized that way. 
It's supposed to be that way. It is supposed to nobody having authority over the people. So if you would raise a full generation that has no experience of having been under the authority, what kind of a people would we have? We will see that in the future. Some of you will probably live in that time. It will be a disaster. And what I said, I'm not here to speak negatively. That's not my style. But you know what? If 25 years from now we come together and say, whoa, what a disaster this country has become in. God forbid, I don't even like to say what I'm saying. But you know what? We will then be the people that will say, we're not surprised. We knew that. This book has told us so. We live in a time like that. We will need to shine and we will have that opportunity. When you see the end coming, when we see the evil days coming, the Bible says rejoice. You know what? That's a long subject. Let's let's get to this. Today we're going to to look at the uh, the uh, mostly spend time in the in the book of Proverbs. But the concept of authority I was blessed in my own studies, what I found and what, how it spoke to myself, and I pray that I could be out of the way and God could speak to all of us. But if you have your Bibles, you can already turn to Proverbs, because that's where we will spend most of our morning. And of course, we're going to give it the approach from young children, and then move through, and hopefully we can come through the way, all the way through adult life. But to the parents, to the adults, I want to share with you the base verse And then uh, take it from here. Proverbs 14, verse 26 has that word fear. And uh, that's a a good word when you look at it in the right um, concept. In the fear of the Lord. So that is somebody has the fear of the Lord. That means this individual is in the authority under God. I fear God. That means that I allow God's authority to rule my life. This is where a lot of young young Christians, and it doesn't matter what age you're, well, it, I couldn't, shouldn't say any age of Christianity, but if I do not really respect the authority of God, I cannot say that I fear God. But fearing God means I have placed myself under his authority. So his will will now rule my will. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. As I thought about this, I thought to myself, God, give this to all of the parents. Strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. This is something that I wish that every one of us as parents could take and apply personally. I have this strong confidence. If you are a parent today, you have been given the authority to raise your family. And there's nothing negative in that. If you, have, if you struggle with negativity and authority, we're not getting it. We're not getting it. Authority means that somebody gives you the, the, the freedom and the power to do something good. <clears throat> Real authority will calm everything around it. A while ago, Marcel and me were traveling <clears throat> and uh, in, an, in a strange area. I hadn't watched the uh, traffic signs and all of a sudden I see the cop is behind me and I tell my wife, you know, I think he wants something of me. And... Uh, so, and that was right. He, he, uh, he, he needed my attention. As he comes walking up to my, uh, my window, you know, he didn't curse or fuss or yell at me. He was a man of a relaxed authority. Why could he be so calm? And why could he be so relaxed? It was because he was confident that I have the authority to stop you. And I now have the authority to penalize you. Later, I was thinking if he had said something like, hey, I caught you over speed and this is a zone where you cannot drive this fast. And based on my books, you'll have to lean over the hood of my car and I'll give you five hot old fashioned behind the barn style of lashes. And then you can go again. You know what? 
Why not? Because I needed a feeling of hurt to remember for next time. He had a different way of, of, of trying to sting it. And, uh, <clears throat> but the, the, the point is, there was no need for loud voices. There was no need for arguing. This is, this is your situation. You committed something wrong. Authority. I like that. You know, parents or anybody, the sad part is that we very often we mix our authority with our emotions and add to the authority anger or frustration or arguing. You know, all of that is not part of authority. All of that is added stuff. And that added stuff is where the pain comes. That's where the negativity comes. So as mom and dad, when you find out somebody in your family has just overstepped whatever you call the authority line in your home, and if you then feel that now I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a little bit over, you know what? You are not in your authority. Children will feel that. Ask my children. Sorry to say, but you could ask my children. And they will say, dad is sometimes adding a lot of emotions to his authority. And that is where things go bad. So authority is there to create calmness and order. You know what? Another interesting thing is <clears throat> authority brings solution. Huh. That's a big one for me. Do we find it that way? You know what? I have to apply my given authority and I'm just creating a problem. The problem is bigger after I talked than before I talked. Something went wrong, but the authority part was good. Authority brings solution. That is why it is so very sad to see when a country decides to do away with authority. We, we, you know what, and I could talk about that for a long time. <clears throat> so as parents, let's take this in. We have been given, we could also say we have been commended the authority from God. We will come to more of these verses. So the intent of giving mom and dad authority in their home is that mom and dad will be providing calmness. They will provide the solution. <clears throat> Let's go to several verses in, the, in, in Proverbs, and they are very, very unpopular. Very, we probably know them by memory, but many of these verses are extremely unpopular in the time that we live. Nonetheless, they are still there, and they're still very uh, true. Verse 20, uh, Proverbs 22, verse 6. That's the, uh, the, the very familiar verse. You all expected this verse, so you can read it by memory. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So this verse gives us the idea that you will, you will select a path. Your children will walk along this path. That could differ a little bit from your home to my home, but we're all putting in a path and our children will now follow, they will walk, they will grow up in this path. That is training up. Not much detail, but it's just what we do. Train up the child and so he's walking on that path and one day you die or you, you, you grow old and you find out, oh, your children still continue on that path. That is a good thing to do. Same chapter, verse 15 it's, and I'm just going to pick verses here, there, which you do in Proverbs anyway. But here we have a little bit of a different concept, and it says foolishness. Oh, yeah. That word we all don't like, and we don't want to be identified as such, but it says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And then comes the very unpopular statement. This is against the law of many countries. It says, but the rod of correction shall drive it from him. Oh boy, how do we do that? It doesn't even sound all that loving, does it? Foolishness is, in the, is bound in the heart of a child. I was that way and my children are that way and my grandchildren, I realize they are all this way. We're all dealing with this same material. Foolishness, bound in the heart. We are born that way. But the rod of correction shall drive it from him. There's something going to set direction by the rod of Christ. I'm just going to add a few verses. You know what? We might not like this, but let's just go to it anyway. Proverbs 13, you go back in your Bible now for a bit. 
and it speaks of us as fathers or, or parents, he that spareth his rod hateth his son. Oh boy. <clears throat> but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times, or in other words, early, before the problem becomes too big. That is what I like about authority. As I said before, authority puts calmness to the situation. So if I am properly applying or living in the authority, I don't procrastinate. I don't allow things to become huge before I step in. I do that early. The King James has the B times. That's an old word. But why the rod? Like, what do you think of a rod? <clears throat> well, I have struggled with this. We could, we could read a few more verses if, if you like. Proverbs 23, and then we'll come back to the, to the rod part. That's, that's a challenge. I think that's a challenge. It's, it's hard to, to uh, figure that out. But let's look at it. Let's just go back to verse chapter 23 again for a bit. And uh, look at a few more things. <clears throat> Proverbs 23, verse 13 to 14. Withhold not correction from the child. Yeah, we can understand that. And then it says, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Oh, how do we interpret this? Some of us that might be listening online might have a problem with this. Let's keep looking. Thou shalt beat him with the rod. That's straight from the Bible. This is biblical stuff. And shall deliver his soul from hell. <clears throat> I think many people, including myself, when we hear these things, we kind of, uh, we shudder at that. Like, yeah, we, I hope we understand, but if we don't, it is sounding very, very bad. Very bad. It sounds so harsh. It sounds so abusive. If we would apply that in an unloving atmosphere, it is abuse. It is harshness. It does damage. It is very bad. Yet, in a loving and caring atmosphere, it is going to produce exactly what it says. Now, let's just ponder on a few facts of life, the way they work. Marcela and me and, and, and some of our children, we had the great privilege yesterday. You saw it on the bulletin. It doesn't say that we had a grandchild, but it's nonetheless, it's still the truth. We, uh, we have a new baby in the family, and so we like to go there. And oh boy, this is a sweet thing. Just, ah. Oh. You take that child and you speak words to the child. It doesn't wink an eye about it. It doesn't do, it has no response at all. But, oh, I like it. And, and we hold the baby. You do this with your babies, don't you? Long before they can respond in any kind of verbal form, you have already created a relationship. Can I ask you, how did you do that? How do you make a relationship with a child that's less than a year old? Do you remember that? No. Like not you, but you were the baby. But yeah, you, you speak to it. How, how, what's the other way of doing it? Touching. 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 Making the child feel something. So it's pretty well accepted that we would kiss the baby or kiss the little children. I do that. I hope you do that too. And... Uh, because I want them to feel something good. I, 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 have to, I have to speak through the language of feeling. How many of you as youth boys and girls have ever thanked God that you outgrew that feeling? And mom and dad don't run after you and kiss you still. Like, think about that. There was a time you all liked that. I like that. We all like to be kissed by mom and dad. Like it might not sound all that loving today, does it? You know why not? Because we have outgrown a language. Kissing by an adult means something else than what it does to the little babies. Thank God. There's a sweet thing in feelings. And it's very sweet to see how it works and changes through life. So when we would talk about the rod and the reproof and all of that, we are talking in an avenue of feelings. Take the six-month-old six child 
or a year old child and uh, just sweetly explain verbally that you're not supposed to open the drawer and pull out all the pots or whatever's in there. Just explain it verbally to him. You will have no success. You might try to do that for a while and it's where you, we are heading to, but your child wants to feel something. That's his language. Nothing negative about that. What is very negative is if you and I become abusively minded and angry and, and you know, would like to shake out or, or, or emotions. That's where the problem is. But that the feeling of stinging and the rod here, we have to understand we're not talking like something that could physically damage a little one. But it is a feeling that speaks the language. And it works. Ask my wife, she could tell you, it works. Or you ask myself, I can't even tell some of those things too. <clears throat> so that is what we're talking about, the rod, it's a feeling. We, we withhold it, it says, and we will lose our child. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him, and I think that's, if you would write it in a, in a 2024 uh, translation, you would probably write something like, if thou would snap him with a short ruler or something like that, we would have that word for beating. In our mind, beating is a big word. And, uh, and it is, but it's, it's what it means. <clears throat> so it's an avenue of feelings. It's a great thing. I'm, I'm so glad God made us that way. None of us have had to constantly run after our children and ask them not to touch the, uh, the hot stove in our house if we had those. Uh, probably many of us had a bad experience where our children touched it and we had so hoped we would be able to prevent it, but they touched it nonetheless and they learned the lesson. That was not words, that was feelings. And that's the avenue. They learn well, they're smart, very smart. God has given us that authority to apply this with wisdom. Proverbs 29, 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. We live in this time when young children bring shame to their parents. God forbid. God forbid. It's not in the plan. It's not in God's design. Proverbs 19, another one, chasten thy son, clearly speaks about some kind of um, dis dis discipline while there is hope. Proverbs 29, 17, correct thy son. A few things to notice. Let's just look at a few things. Biblical authority is given and expected from the parents. You know, as parents, as I said, as my friends shared about his two Sunday school boys, the one set of parents were good good looking family, but er, somewhere in their home, maybe dad, maybe mom and dad, but somehow this authority responsibility was overlooked. And this is how many good homes become very needy homes in the next generation. Sometimes you wonder, is that not the grandson to so-and-so or the son to so-and-so? What, what's gone on here? And you know what? Sometimes it is because this authority structure was neglected. There was no correction. There was no direction. <clears throat> As I already have said, what is authority in child training? Number one, it is to create a relaxed atmosphere and a form of giving and expecting order. It is confidence. Authority has nothing to do with anger, nothing to do with abuse. Authority has nothing to do with harshness. That is how the world today is interpreting authority in many cases. They, uh, they interpret that as abuse, as harshness, and people are ready to catch on or to latch on to that idea and say, let's do away with authority. We would then be a free people. It's not true. <clears throat> As parents, we need to check ourselves. If we are in the authority or if we're not. If you and I as parents are in authority at home, then we have confidence. 
We have confidence of our, of our work. We have hope. That's a big thing. We have trust. And we rejoice in the work as parenting because we can parent with freedom. If I do not have the authority, if I have neglected the God-given authority and I'm trying to do something self-made or homemade, then I am a parent that will nag and nag and again nag and I will deal with a lot of discouragement. I will likely deal with quite a bit of anger, frustration, hopelessness, giving up. You know what? That was never God's plan. God's plan was, I'm giving you the authority. I want you to put that to use. <clears throat> so in order to keep your child's heart, he has to have you to guide, teach and protect him. And if we can teach our children to submit to us in early ages, you know what? We have a peaceful home and it creates a good atmosphere for the rest of, our, for the, rest of the children's life. Our children want to know whether they favor us. Something that I have found in my, in my life as a parent. My child wants to know, do I favor you? I wanted to know that from my parents. I never asked my dad or my mom, do I favor you? But I wanted to hear that. Somehow indirectly, I wanted to hear that. Favors or favored comes from knowing that I am an obedient child. I know that. If authority structure is lacking, your children don't know whether they obey. The other day, Marcel and me were riding in Ontario and the, the speed limit was whatever it was. And then there's a bigger sign, much bigger than the speed limit sign that says, if, if, you, if they catch you at, at, I think, 20 kilometers over speed, they're going to give you a fine. I say to my wife, I'm confused. I don't know what speed limit is because this sign would indicate it's this. That sign indicates that I'm fine to go up to there. And so it's a confusing situation. Many homes run the same way. Children don't know when, is, when, I'm, when am I at the line. We're not talking about a strictness or a uh, abusiveness. We're talking about relaxed order. <clears throat> Children want to be taught this way. Children actually appreciate that. They don't have the words to say that, but children appreciate when this is done properly. We're doing our 18-month-old child no favor by walking back and forth because he's whining and he's, he's just not willing to submit and we're kneeling down to him, trying to make him happy somehow. We're doing, if otherwise the child is healthy, we're doing them no favor. We would do them a much bigger favor if they understood, at my age, I have to quit this. I have to be happy now. <clears throat> We were visiting a family one time. I observed the dad, the, the, the children were playing. The girl was running in and out of the door and uh, she left the door open every time. And the dad said, and he called her by name. He said, you need to close the door. She turned around, she closed the door. Five minutes later, same thing happened. And okay, well, nobody got excited. And um, we kept visiting. And a little bit later, it happened for the third time. And I thought, oh, How's this going to turn out? Nobody got excited. Nobody got loud. Everything stayed calm. But it was obvious that after strike three, you're out. <clears throat> was authority. Nobody was shamed. Nobody was abused. But it was clear that when you have strike three, you're out. We play baseball and we seem to be okay with that, don't we? After strike three, I have very seldom heard that we break into an argument and say, you know, there was a reason for that. No, it's just, that's authority. That's, that's what sets everybody free. <clears throat> Let's, as parents, continue to enjoy the uh, responsibilities and the freedom that God has given us to train a healthy and a happy home. Homes where things can stay calm. And peaceful. Sometimes we would like to just put everything out of reach. You know what? As adults, I find that in my life too, I would sometimes just like to get everything out of the way. Just nobody could reach me or I could reach nobody. And just let me alone. Let me alone. And uh, 
And yet, no, there's really not the answer for that either because that's just not how life works. Sometimes we're training our children that the only way how they can be good is if we put everything out of reach. Now you have no option. You just have to stay on the floor and all the stuff is out of reach. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we might be in store and we realize that if we will walk through this one alley, we'll have a big show. And as parents, we willfully, we just maneuver around. We miss the one aisle in the store because that's the aisle where we, every time we break into a big problem with the family. And so we avoid the aisle. Somebody told us a long time ago, you're doing your child no favor by that. Neither yourself. Just train. <clears throat> As parents, when we are in the authority that God has given us, we're doing our child a huge disfavor by backing out of there. We can become the cause of our children's misery. I close with this thought. There is nothing stronger, securer, and more relieving as an absolute, relaxed, and firm authority in the home. This is freedom from parents to children, a freedom that so many people don't have. I'm a man that loves to think of freedom. We're all in for freedom. You know what? Your home is the first place that God has called that we should live in freedom. And we can do this. We have been given the means. We have been given the direction as to how can we live in freedom. There is no authority except that which has been given by God. You and I, and whatever our role is, let's look at this. We personally have received the authority and we can now live in that. Let's do that with joy. Can I ask you to stand today? And then we want to pray. <clears throat> God in heaven, we thank you that there's, a, there's such a good order. We thank you that you are the God that ordained authority. God, I thank you that there's no people, no human um, powers that can deny that. I pray this morning a special blessing on all of us as parents. God, help us to enjoy parenthood. Help us to live in this structure that you have given us. God, help us to be those men and those women that bring order, that bring calmness, and that live in the authority. God, help us all not to step outside of that and all of a sudden add emotions and anger and God forbid abuse to this, what you have ordained to be so precious, but rather that we would be man and woman of vision and of order. God, I pray for all of us that have chosen, that have claimed to be born again and to be followers of Jesus Christ. Help us to check our own hearts. Are we fearing you? Have we truly continued being submissive to your authority? And where we are not, God, I pray that you would send us repentance and help us to, to become sorry for stepping outside of that authority and living on our own will. But Lord, that we could all truly wholeheartedly claim and say, Lord, Lord of our own life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat>